Ian Fritz is well known and loved inside the modular DIY community for sharing a wide number of module design circuits and ideas. And one of his most popular streams of thought involve chaos theory and modules. Several companies, including LB Designs, Nonlinear Circuits, and Random Source, have turned his circuits into modules that you can buy, or of course, you can go ahead and build the circuits from scratch. One of his earliest designs in this area is the Chaos Generator Quadrature Oscillator, or KQAO. I call it Chaco for short. It combines two modules, a Quadrature LFO with sine wave outputs at every 90 degrees, and also a second order Chaos Generator circuit. The two are normaled together, and you can also override that normaling through the drive connector. In this first video, I want to discuss how this chaos circuit works and really break down its parameters, controlling just one simple thing on a synthesizer, filter cutoff. And then in the next video, we're going to talk about using two and three dimensions of its outputs to control more complex sound generators, such as this 2HP valve you hear in the background right now. Now, when a lot of people hear the term chaos, they assume something that's random or completely out of control, but that's not true when it comes to chaos theory. A chaotic circuit is actually something that is somewhat in control. It stays within certain boundaries. Chaos circuits tend to be based on things that are oscillating in feedback, like a filter in feedback. The difference is there's some non-linear element in that feedback path that's making sure that what comes out of the feedback is not the same as what goes into it. And that's what causes the oscillations to go off the rails, to create some interesting patterns. For example, I've redone our patch here just to get a sawtooth wave from the Moog. And as opposed to a simple periodic oscillation, like the sine wave or oscillator, the quadrature oscillator, the output of this chaotic circuit sounds like this. Now just to relate the chaos circuit to something you do know, such as a filter, let's take a look at the circuit design and compare it to a normal filter. You don't need to know electronics, I just want to point out circuit sections to you. The Chakuo, as I like to call it, has two integrators. These are slew generators, or low-pass filters. There's two of them, so there's two poles to this filter. The feedback path has this pair of diodes in it. Diodes are not linear elements. What comes out is not exactly what goes into it. That's what adds the chaos to the circuit. Our quadrature oscillator is our input, or our drive part of the circuit. It's like feeding an oscillator into a normal two-pole low-pass filter. The rate is the equivalent of the cutoff of the filter. It's basically the slew amount of these integrators. The damp is the feedback amount from the first pole through the feedback circuitry. Then Ian Fritz added a couple of interesting little details to this circuit. There's gain, which is a second feedback path going through this additional section here. And coupling the size of that second feedback path comes from the first pole of our filter or the second pole of our filter. Now, if you ever played around with a filter that's been put into self-resonance and feeding an oscillator through it, you know that the relationship between the cutoff frequency and the input pitch has a lot to do with what comes out of it. In this case, the input is coming from our quadrature oscillator. It's the pink line on the scope over here. Rate is the cutoff of our filter. If I lower rate down, or the cutoff of our filter to the point where it's well below the input frequency, we're just getting a damped version of what's coming into this chaos circuit. You see, it very much resembles the path of that sine wave coming into it. But as I increase the cutoff of these integrators, the rate that this circuit runs at, the internal oscillations that are generated by the feedback path are going to be higher than what's feeding it. And now you're going to see some interesting little resonances appear on top of that pattern. The tuning relationship between these two has a lot to do with that final waveform. You're almost getting beat frequencies between the two here. Now again, once the input frequency gets over the cutoff of the chaos circuit, you get something pretty simple. But when you get them somewhat similar, or you make the rate, the cutoff of the chaos circuit, to be higher than the incoming pitch, then you start getting more interesting waveforms. Damp is the equivalent of feedback from the first pole of our filter. By turn damping down, it's the equivalent of turning feedback up, so we can get more oscillations. 
Now we're getting the oscillation pattern much more strongly from the chaos part of the circuit. As I increase damp, that's the same as turning down the feedback in this particular circuit, and we're going to have less of those resonant warbles. Now we are relying much more on the relationship between the rate in the chaos circuit and the frequency coming into it to create our patterns. I'll decrease the damping and let the rate and the feedback run a little more wild. I go to very high frequency to run the chaos circuit at, and high feedback. And now the feedback path in the chaos circuit takes over. But you see where it's still riding on top of, it's still driven by this input oscillator. I was to take the drive all the way down where there's no input and decrease the amount of feedback, you see you just get to a straight line. There's no oscillation going on. If I reduce the damp or increase the feedback in the chaos circuit, the chaos circuit, with a little kick, will go into self-oscillation. Then we'll bring up the level of the oscillator coming into it Start mixing in with that. Now the X output of this particular circuit really shows off how it moves between the high level of the input and the low level of the input. The Y and Z outputs, which we're going to explore more in the next movie, tend to be more almost like AC coupled, hanging along that center line there. Now, I've been using coupling and gain at the default settings recommended by Ian Fritz. This is just to simplify things initially. The gain is like a second feedback path that reacts a bit differently than damp does. For example, if I reduce it, the circuit will actually run away to its upper and lower limits. This is like feedback that's so strong it's clipping the circuit. But as I change the gain amount, we get a little different interaction on the second path. And it's much more prone to let the oscillations of the chaos circuit get through, but at a lower level. So gain kind of reduces or increases the swing of the output, while at the same time deciding when not to allow fast oscillations or just the initial drive to get through. A little more drive here. Now it's up at the high level. So chaos circuits can kind of hit the rails, as they say, in one direction or the other. Changing the gain amount will get it off those rails. Play around with the frequencies a little bit. Get a little bit of beat going on between the two here. You notice whenever you change a parameter, the circuit basically has to reset into a new equilibrium. Now it's exhibiting truly chaotic behavior. Then finally, coupling decides where gain is getting its signal from, the first pole or the second pole, so you can create different results. Then change the coupling, 
So these are a bit less intuitive to use. But basically, if you think of gain is go all the way to the rails or pull back from the rails and let the oscillations get through. And coupling is the nature of those oscillations the gain is allowing through. It's interesting how if you drive it hard enough, it goes back to following that input frequency. Cool. And that's just one output from the chalk quo. The real fun comes if you have something that benefits from having multiple parameters changed at once, such as wave, shape, and cutoff, or a couple parameters in a modeling synthesizer, such as this vowel. So that's what we'll play with in the next movie.